On the evening of the 26th of January, 1854, Rocchetti, Ottilia, Cagliero, Rua, and I met in Don Bosco's. From that evening on, the name of Silesians was given to those who took part in and would follow this code. Go out to the whole world and proclaim the good news to everyone. I've always done what I could. How much more remains to be done? My sons will see to the rest. Give me souls, take away the rest. Give yourself completely to God. Give yourself completely to God with all your affections, thoughts, and physical energies. Entering the room, Dominic immediately noticed the placard hanging on the wall. It contained Don Bosco's project. Give me souls, take away the rest. Dominic understood its meaning and entrusted himself completely to his master. These words reveal the secret of Don Bosco. The guiding principle of his life was to reach out to all youth, to help them realize themselves and to lead them to the fullness of joy. It became almost an obsession for him that gave rise to an overwhelming zeal and untiring effort, inspired dreams and ventures and institutions. The priest should be like the good shepherd who gives his life for his flock. Celebrating the Eucharist, he offered himself along with Jesus on the altar in order to conform himself to him. He invoked Mary as the teacher of the love of God and service to one's neighbor, as the help of Christians in their everyday struggles. From these windows, Don Bosco's gaze extended beyond the playground and the church of Valdocco. He dreamed of the boys of the whole world, their readiness, their need for formation, their friendship, He gazed at the church, the mother of all, and at her mission of salvation. He became aware of the urgency contained in the command of Jesus. Go out to the whole world and proclaim the good news to everyone. He deemed it important to involve as many people as possible in this venture, he became an entrepreneur of charity, a founder of educational families. He took up their planning and organization. He evolved an educational method. He produced books in a prolific manner. Education is centered on the heart. He was convinced of that. Hence, he dedicated much of his time to listening to people in the playground, in the church, in personal colloquy, and in teaching. Until his last breath, his life was spent for youth. I have always done what I could. How much more remains to be done? My sons will see to the rest. His gaze and vision is for us both an invitation and a challenge. There is a striking dissimilarity between the simplicity of the first oratory and the complexity of the later constructions. Don Bosco expressed his love of God and neighbor by being attentive to little details, 
and by dedicating himself to boys with love and patience. Always he kept looking ahead. He has taught us to combine, in the manner of St. Francis de Sales and with the realism of Mary, our caring mother and powerful help, fidelity with a spirit of adventure, self-sacrificing work with courageous dreams. In this manner, he attained sanctity and glory. At Valdocco are preserved some objects of great symbolic value. They remind us of the foundations of his spiritual mission. The pulpit of the church, from where the word of God was proclaimed, a word that enlightens and gives strength. The ambo of the good night talk, from where the word of education was imparted, a word that instructs and animates. The confessional, from whose intimacy the word of mercy was pronounced, a word that regenerates and guides. The altar, on which the Eucharist was offered, the bread that nourishes and transforms. The contemplative dimension in Don Bosco, a man of action and union with God, reveals the secret of the extraordinary fruitfulness of his apostolate. Give yourself completely to God with all your affections, thoughts and physical energies. In this way, he can make use of you as he deems best for the salvation of the world.